we should just say before anybody asks any questions that this session will also be recorded and it will also be put up in a separate video on the web as a question and answer session regarding this. So just bearing that in mind, would anybody like to start us off with a question on what we've heard so far? Okay, maybe I could ask a question then. Um, so we've seen about how we do this between UEMA and GATE, Richard. Are there any plans to extend it beyond those two frameworks? Um, maybe into other third party frameworks or maybe to allow people to extend it themselves if they'd like to. Um, yeah, what are the plans around that? Yeah, so the I think this is mainly a question of effort, right? Um, so Gate and, and Yuima, uh, as, as it was described in this in these slides, uh, we we accept uh, expect that we can download the components from a Maven repository and use them. But um, I've shown here in the architecture also a box for remote service, so uh, a component that is not downloadable but that is accessible through a remote uh, invocation interface. So I think at least that should be something uh, we, we also need to support. Uh, we have been experimenting with interfacing with the uh, uh, NLP services from, from the ILSP lab at uh, Athena Research. Um, we have been experimenting a bit with interfacing with services from, uh, from the labs grid in the United States. So um, I think there are major infrastructures out there um, and major component collections that are not covered by Gate and UEMA. And we also will have, well, we'll also have to look at whether we want to interface with them. One example could also be like Weblicht in, in Clarin, you know. Um, yeah, so, but it's, uh, I, I think it's, it's a matter of priorities and um, of, of the expected benefit of interfacing with them. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question here in the chat from Rene, which is, what's your timeline for the manual mapping step and when do you plan to have this available? So. Maybe you could speak a little bit on that, Richard. Well, I should probably ping pong that back to you because it's your component. <laughs> so I believe the time mapper has now been made um, available open source. Um, I don't have a URL for that, and Jacob's currently away, which is the person who's done it, Jacob. Um, but the component is available. I guess the question is, as you were saying before, the effort and the time to actually start doing those mappings um, and having mappings working between components. Does that sound correct to you? Do we have any further questions on the things that Richard has presented or the general work of open-minded in respect to workflows and annotations? Okay, the question here, what are your plans on visual interaction for workflow creation? Um, yeah, that I think that mainly depends on on the workflow system that we will eventually choose for use in the system. So um, uh, there are several we have taken into consideration, and all of them have uh, some way of uh, visual composition of uh, of workflows. So, for example. Um, Argo has a, a, pi a pipeline builder where you can drag and drop together um, uh, pipelines that run components in a sequence. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, Matt. That, that's correct, right? No, you're correct, Richard. You're correct. Yeah. And, and, and for example, an, another one uh, or another type of uh, workflow system that we have looked into was or is Galaxy. Um, which uh, also has a, a kind of a, a toolbox on the side which shows all the available components and you drag them into a, into a space on screen and then connect them through so-called noodles. And the Galaxy does not only support uh, pipelines, so sequences of, of executions, but uh, it in, in theory also supports um, um, connecting one component, the output of one component to multiple other components. Um, so it's more like a directed graph. 
so there are different things we are looking into. There's also the common workflow language, uh, which um, is quite similar under the how of how uh, Galaxy works under the hood, but introduces additional concepts on top of that, and does actually not use a UI. It's just a way of how to describe a workflow. Yeah, but we are we are more interested in having an actual graphical um, graphical workflow builder. But uh, for the time for for the for the uh, for checking out actual interoperability problems. Um, Having a graphical interface uh, is just an additional impedance. It takes away time that we can use to focus on the actual interoperability problems, which is why why we started uh, this uh, open meta script thing, where the UI is basically a very short, uh, very concise language, and that allows us to f to focus on uh, on uh, specific interoperability questions, like on the mapping and on the deployment uh, across different frameworks. Um, without having to worry about how these are integrated into user uh, user interface, but this is not the user interface is, is definitely there for us to work on. Okay, Grafel says that Argo can also do directed graphs. That's correct. Yes, it can. Uh, we have a question here from Bar, which says, "What will be the expressiveness of the mapping methods, and can we imagine?" mapping between any two trees? I think that's again a question to you. Um, then it would be a question that would be better suited to Jacob and not to me, unfortunately. I wouldn't be able to give any insight onto this. Yeah, so my, my feeling is on... This question, is this question re related to that um, conversion that you presented, Richard? between uh, a pair of sentences and uh, I think there was a name entity and gene. So I'm not entirely sure what, what Muhammad is, uh, what Baez is, um, is talking about. I see that the, uh, the mapping, the type mapper as it is, the Argon type mapper, I can imagine that it might, it might have problems with, um, with mapping, for example, constituency trees or dependency relations. Where there is a, there are pointers to other, um, to other annotations are involved, and you need to, to do the mapping somehow consistently. But um, we we don't we didn't have examples of those. So I'm that, that's why I think uh, um, you maybe even <laughs> Rafael or uh, Matt or Jacob are probably better suited to answer in how far can be all can it also be used for such um, complex um, structures like dependencies or uh, or constituency trees well so so the type mapper was um, devised for simple cases like the one that you presented richard uh, when it comes to things like mapping trees or different uh, complex structures like link lists to um, containers and things like that. Uh, I'm not sure where work uh, currently is going towards with Argo. I haven't been working on it for uh, over two years. Um, but back then, the idea was to uh, do it via Sparkle. So you would represent one set of annotations as a graph. And then what you would use Sparkle to translate it to another graph, which would represent the schema on the other side, on uh, the, the on the target component. And that 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 gave uh, quite a bit of flexibility. The problem is that um, Sparkle query is not uh, very simple to master, and there uh, isn't many tools that would support debugging it. So without those, uh, without some sort of tool that helps you build those this transformation, um, it is. I think it will be rendered useless for complex structures. Mm -hmm. it, would, it would require. So, a yes, lot of we do have the Sparkle mapper as well, which we haven't yet open sourced. We are planning on open sourcing it to use in this project mm -hmm. because, as you say, it can handle more complex query type. Um, but that's kind of in the pipeline for several reasons. Yeah. Well, overall, I'm, I'm glad to see that 
um, the progress on um, on uh, co in, in collaboration between the different components of different platforms. Uh, if I could suggest something, I think I would focus uh, primarily on the uh, packaging, installation, deployment, this kind of stuff, instead of the mapping. Because uh, once you have this first step as a developer, you can already play with it. And I think this will be the, the most useful part. I don't think, uh, I'm quite skeptical on um, developing a, a uniform or, you know, all embroidering mapping system or mapping tool or um, even some sort of strategy. So um, I think that if we want to make it generic, just building that infrastructure that allows you to take components from different platforms and put it together in your own pipeline uh, and then you are in charge of the conversion, that would all already be a huge step. Yes, but it will, will not uh, um, it will not be very convenient for people that are unable to make the mapping. So how, how should they do that, right? So we, we need to have some way, either some, some way of mapping between these components. Otherwise, people cannot take uh, components from different frameworks and put them together. They will simply not do anything sensible, right? Unless we can forward the information from one component to the other. So having uh, this mapper component in, in place uh, uh, gives users um, a way of how they can how they can customize such mappings, but it requires uh, some good knowledge about uh, how the schemas actually look like. And uh, we would like to target people that do not have this knowledge or do not um, want to acquire this knowledge. So um, why, if, if, if certain components from different component collections are combined with each other uh, over and over again, People would be rewriting, or I would imagine that people would be rewriting the same mappings over and over again. So in that case, um, the question is, why shouldn't we be able to to provide some common mappings inside the platform as well, in addition to allowing people to specify their own? Yes, but it seems to me that uh, it, it it could work fine for for simple um, simple schema, uh, but um, something anything more complex. Uh, would be difficult, um, and there are also cases where you would, where two different developers would like to um, map it differently. And I believe there could be some structures that um, have some level of ambiguity or some different purpose and for different use case. Um, so even having uh, even even if it were possible to map every schema to every other schema and every other system, I think I think there's still room for interpretation. Yes. Um, so that's why that's why I am a bit skeptical about um, doing this kind of all-in-one, just plug-and-play thing. You, you I mean, it's it's a, it's a great great idea, but. Uh, what I'm trying to say here, I'm not trying to discourage from doing anything like that. What I'm trying to say here is that I think I would focus the effort first on uh, the the first part, the um, making things uh, work. So putting components together in a single uh, process, so to speak, and then thinking about how I can map the output of one to the input of the other. I think the things are kind of orthogonal to each other, so different people can work on it in parallel, even. Yeah, and I think the project structure is such that the uh, work that is focused and being presented here is on the interoperability, and we do have another section of the project which is focusing on the implementation. Um, and so I do understand what you're saying, Raf, that that implementation is very important however we're also working on this interoperability side of things alongside that and 
we are doing both at the same time. We just happen to not have a webinar about the packaging up of components at the moment, uh, but that is work that's happening and will come out at some point in the project. Okay. Thank you. It's good to know. So okay, I have a um, question to Rafa, if I may. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you have implemented this, uh, this, uh, and written this nice paper about this Sparkle-based uh, type conversion, right? So um, I, I don't know how deeply you got into the whole uh, thing about of repre representing um, type systems as as RDF. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, um, do you think it's kind of sensible to use uh, to set up like uh, RDF level or OWL level linkings be of be between um, type systems in order to uh, to correct between them, or automatically pass, it, or just as a uh, as a le as a lesser thing at least for documentation? So is is the semantic web technology suitable for that? Opinion? Well, we, we use it. We use it in several projects. Uh, this kind of component that um, does the um, RDF-based translation between the type systems. Uh, but as I said, the problem with that is they are difficult to produce those mappings. Mm -hmm. uh, even so, the idea is that we use uh, Sparkle, which is uh, which is a standard. Right? It's a standard language, so there is no DSL, so everybody should be, it, it, the language is well documented, well developed, and well maintained. But still, if you don't have tools that help you out with creating this mapping, the, uh, from our experience, debugging is was very difficult to do. Um, and in the end, I'm not sure that someone who is new to that will easily adapt it. Okay, so one thing one thing that is quite nice, I have the feeling in, in RDF is that you basically uh, have a you, you create a structure and then um, instead of uh, typing that structure and giving its features some names, each 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 uh, feature or a link a, a triple has always these full URLs, right? So uh, I could have uh, let's say a token and the in the feature on the token is not just. Uh, um, the part of speech, but is actually uh, it has a full, full, quali fully, fully qualified URL to refer refer to it, um, so that you can take um, feature definitions from all kinds of different sources and mix them together into a single into a single RDF. Uh, um, I don't know how it's called entity or or individual or or whatever resource. Yeah. 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 Um, and in, in, you could you could. In your That's definitely the advantage. It's just yeah. that the problem is with actually writing the query that does the mapping. Yes, and in, in Uima we can't do that because the um, the, uh, um, the the types or the, the feature structures are strictly typed. We cannot overlay them on each other, so to speak, right? So that that kind of doesn't doesn't work. So we cannot easily reuse feature definitions from other type systems. We always have to reuse an entire type. So I was wondering um, if that is what is the kind of benefit that one would see in being able to reuse individual features, like in an RDF scenario, in contrast to in, in, uh, reusing entire types, as in the UMA scenario. And um, I was also wondering whether, if we cannot reuse individual features but have to reuse entire types, is there is there some kind of a silver lining on the horizon that we could imagine? Um, selecting specific types from different existing type systems and combining them into recommended type systems. Simply be so. So we know that in some, in most, many cases there are lots of overlaps, right? But in other cases there are not. So maybe do, do you do you think there is some? It would be possible to kind of agree on a kind of a, a hybrid, you know, Frankenstein type system that uh, that takes in um, type definitions from different sources. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, could you could you give a more concrete example, maybe? So, um, 
let's take a look at um, Apache C takes and at um, um, it can be made up. Clear, uh, clear TK. Okay, so clear TK defines uh, what is a sentence and a token, right? And it might define what is a what is a syntax tree and so on. But clear TK does not uh, uh, go into um, the definition of of what is a drug or what is a medical compound or such things, right? So, but CTAX does that because it's a processing system for uh, processing medical records from doctors. You know, they're interested in, in what is the drug status of a patient and so on. So, um, what I'm saying is that there's a, there's a kind of a basic level of, of uh, linguistic processing um, where, where we have a lot of overlap between different frameworks. But my feeling is that there are also domain specific. Um, Type systems where we actually don't have overlap so much, so so that, that we can kind of agree or or um, agree on some some type systems for specific use cases. So one for one for one for the segmentation, one for uh, one for uh, syntax tree representation, one for named entity representation, one for medical drugs, one for genes. I don't know. But instead of creating new ones, um, for each of these domains, select some existing ones. And to recommend that if you, if you have this aspect in your, in your data, then you should use this type system for that aspect. So that we kind of network. Give, well, you know, that, 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 would be, that would be ideal. But um, as I think you mentioned yourself, um, different groups would like to uh, um, encode different specifics of uh, certain things, even if it's just you know a, a, a patient. Probably uh, different uh, groups would like to encode different things for that particular uh, entity. So in the end, you will end up with different uh, definitions of seemingly the same thing. Mm -hmm. But does it? Would it get so? That, that's if that's when if we used like a, a system like UEMA, we always have to get entire types, right? And po possibly types that get use each other. Um, what if we would uh, try to go for a? I, I wouldn't say schema-free, but uh, a more flexible approach like an RDF graph, where you can actually uh, combine stuff at the level of features. It does it make it better. Or um, is it isn't it is it actually not uh, making anything better because we still have resources and they're still linked to each other at at different granularities and in different ways. So uh, it, it might look attractive at first, but if you look into it deeper, it might actually not make any more significant difference um, towards. The, yeah, so yeah, I, I I think I know I now know what you mean. Um, I don't see why not. Uh, but then again, the component would have to support this kind of um, dynamic uh, uh, grouping of uh, of different features from different. Instead of you know trying to uh, assign an entire type, it would just pick features. I, I think it would be, have to be enabled on the component level, right? Or even on the platform level. The wrapper in the wrappers in some way. I, or for example, if we consider it something like open Minded script, possibly in the framework adapters. Yeah, uh, in terms of in terms of uh, the presentation in RDF, uh, obviously RDF is just very generic, it's just a bunch of uh, triplets uh, of triples. Um, but uh, on top of that, you also get some schema, right? So there is this um, RDF schema, which defines things like um, Classes, subclasses, types. Um, so the, the the more schemata you have on top of RDF, uh, the, the the more specific you can be, the uh, the more uh, targeted the inf inferences. If you leave it open and you know you just have a bunch of triples, uh, there will be no understanding about anything, right? So yes, yeah, no. But we could, for example, we could easily transform a UEMA type system definition into a into an RDF schema or an old schema, I suppose. 
and um, yeah, yeah we, and, and yeah, this is this is exactly what what, what was done with this Kahn. Yeah, and as as soon as we did that, we would no longer be limited to by, by the way how email works. That is by taking whole features, whole types. Sorry, whole yeah whole types. But we could we could mix and match at a more fine granular level. But as I said, I'm not entirely sure if that is how much that would be helpful. It might be. Um, it's definitely possible. If it's helpful, I'm not sure. No. Okay. I'm guessing the platforms and components would have to be open to it. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mohamed Uba has another question. So maybe we can fix the set of transformation, for example, split and join. Uh, I think that refers to the mapping again. So I think that's what the mapping already, the type component, type mapping component already does. So it uh, it allows you to specify like paths. And if you, we haven't, we had an example of that here. Um, here, so this is basically split operation where you split one one annotation into two. Um, so I think that is kind of supported. And if I, I I kind of expect that the same path annotation is also possible on the left side, uh, so that would be a join operation then. Um, I, I don't know if it's possible, but Rafael and uh, Matt might know more about that. Uh, I don't remember, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. <laughs> I think it is possible. Yeah. So in that sense, we would already have uh, a split and join transformation. Um, what, I, what I don't know, what we don't also have examples of is, is uh, um, transformation at the value level. So if let's say you have a, a name in one uh, scheme and a name, first name, last name in another scheme, whether there's some way of doing string manipulation, I think that's, I, I would expect that's kind of probably again in the realm of the Sparkle stuff, if, if at all possible there, but maybe not here. I don't know if Sparkle has any provisions for uh, string manipulation. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are uh, string functions definitely in in R uh, in uh, Sparkle. Um, that simple type map, uh, uh, the version I left did not have that possibility. Yeah. Uh, Matt could probably comment on. Yes, it it still doesn't have it. So the type mapper doesn't allow you to do that. But then on the other hand, I think it's probably not very common that that is necessary to do most of the time with the data that that i've seen so far we just really need to rename or slightly relocate um, specific values but don't necessarily have to mangle the values but there will be another uh, webinar on uh, knowledge resources in uh, two weeks probably um, and we might hear more about that in this context <laughs> Okay. Are there any more questions for Richard or for anybody? I have a question about adding a new component standard to this, because if we have two, then it's pretty obvious that we need to define these mappings. But oh, what if I add a new one? Do I have to define mappings for every, for every other existing standard here? Or do you imagine we can chain the conversions? To have only one common format. Yeah, of course. The more different types or things we support, um, the more we have a problem with with mapping, right? Because doing end-to-end -end mappings is, uh, is is does not scale, right? Um, yeah, yeah that's So that's that's why I try to make a point that first thing it's useful to make a distinction between schema mapping and uh, meta model mapping. So if if we can establish the equivalence on on meta model level between different frameworks, then um, that's one mapping less that we have to worry about because we can do it in, in a generic way, and uh, we could even join we can could even chain them. So if if uh, a is equivalent to B and B is equivalent to C, and we can then we can uh, chain these these things, right? 
So that, right. would, that would optimally reduce the, the problem of, of uh, mapping just to the schema level. Now, then we still have yes, the problem. About. Then we still have the problem about the um, the different schemata, and that's that's why I I do not have a good solution. So on one on the one hand, we want to avoid defining yet another type system. Um, uh, we could do that. We could just solve this problem by defining yet another type system, and everybody would have to map to that. But uh, the, it, it, I think it doesn't make the problem go away because then somebody creates a new type of component which we haven't thought of, and then the question is either the person cannot bring the component into the platform because uh, we didn't think of the types for it yet, or the person has to discuss with us how, or with the whole rest of the world potentially, how the representation should be done, which would be a major overhead. Um, or the person brings it in and defines his own types. Right. And when that happens, there's a good chance that uh, if it's a hot topic, a second person will do something similar in a very similar frame of time. And uh, we will have, again, two uh, parallel development and two different uh, representations of them. So um, so that's where, again, the type mapping can, comes in, right? Um, sure. I... I would tend towards that we try to keep the try to minimize the mapping in some way, um, at least for the things that we already control and that we know about. And um, right now, the as as the ex experiment goes in this open minted script, we convert between components. So um, not only the meta model, but actually also the schema. Uh, but yeah, one, one way of approaching it would, would, would be to say, can, can we just take use one of the type systems or a selection of different types from different type systems from, from our consortium and um, or, or even beyond this consortium and say, these are the types that we recommend to use that people should map, map into and we want to use them at, um, at, the, at the pipeline level. So we would not map between two components, but we would map from the pipeline level to a component and from a component back to the pipeline level. And the benefit, yeah, kind of benefit of this is, is that um, when we transform between components, we would always have to transform the entire set of data, right? Everything. Yes, yes. But when we map in and out of a single component, we only need to map those things that the component needs to know about on input, so we only need to convert from the pipeline to the component what the component needs to know about, and the same on the output. Uh, so this is basically what we all, what everybody of us does when it wraps a tool as a as a UML component, as a gate component. We map from some pipeline level representation into the representation of the particular tool, mm -hmm. right? Um, but that that would that would require that we. Uh, um, define a set of, of recommended annotation types at the pipeline level. Either, either define it as on the level of type system, so this is a type system you should use. If you, are do, if you want to do something that is not defined by the type system, no problem, define your own type. But if you want to do something that, is, um, that, is, uh, that the type system already covers, uh, let's say you want to do part of speech tagging, please don't define your own part of speech tags. Okay? Um, and uh, have a process maybe of evolving the type system. But then we run into the question, do we, you can, can we use or can we decide uh, on the type system that we already have? Or do we, do, we want, do we invent a new one, which is actually something we wanted to avoid? Well, I would imagine we choose what, the best one that we have and we extend it with the things that are missing. It's probably the least labor. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what is the best? Well, I don't know, but <laughs> how do we, decide? we can check that. How do we decide? I mean, we, we decide on base of which one covers most use cases. So if you have the table with with the types, and uh, we know which one is uh, which one is associated with which one, and you can see if you EMA or gate or whatever type system covers most of them, and where apply uh, implementing the new ones would be would be the shortest process. 
Yeah. We could uh, we could try to we could do that. Um, we could also try an alternative approach would be to try and evolve multiple type systems at the same time. So try to align them in terms of expressiveness so that the mapping becomes easier. Mm -hmm. So try to yeah. bring all the type systems more or less to the same level. That would also be an option. I'm not saying it's a, it's a, it's a better option, uh, but um, um, if we, even if we take an existing type system, so if you, as you know, the, the, the Yuma type system has, have, systems have fully qualified names, right? If they if yeah. it didn't have fully qualified names, if it were just named entity and part of speech, it might be easy, right? But because of the fully qualified name, even if uh, some two things are called a sentence and they have the same features, they are still different types in different people, in different type systems. True. And uh, if we uh, maybe we maybe we'll not be able to decide that uh, a sentence should be called um, the the foo or the bar sentence, right? Because foo or bar might one one person might not like foo, the other person might not like bar. And uh, we had I brought up the issue of control earlier, where where I said that people are already uh, so it allows you a certain flexibility if you run something in your own namespace, you can just you can try to change it without without uh, and, and you know what is the scope of, of, of things that you will break I don't know for whom are you breaking things uh, or, that, um, or with whom do you have to coordinate if you if you want to make a change mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they, they may even also mean if you different things by a sentence yeah, the right? user base okay. thing, right sorry yeah I, I'm saying that they may even mean different things by a sentence right for example it's called a sentence, but for example, one of them includes full stop at the end and the other one doesn't. And you don't know that without getting the information from the type system author, right? Yeah, potentially. That's, I never, I, uh, I think there are sentences that have full stops and others that have not, even in irregular text. <laughs> yes. Yeah, obviously sentence is a very easy example, but. Yeah, but it already shows like kind of of the problems. Um, so, for example, you could you could say so. Uh, let's say we we are in open minted, so we define a new type system. We call it the EU open minted type system, and it's called the EU EU open minted uh, named entity or the EU open minted sentence. And everybody everybody should use that, right? So uh, Argo, yeah. Decay Pro Core, Gate, everybody is calling their types now uh, EU open minted sentence. So what would your existing user bases say about that? So I, I know that lots of stuff would break for people if we did that. Yes, yes, obviously. So um, that's, a, that's again where kind of mapping comes in. Or, or, do you mm -hmm. see, or do you find it realistic that we do that? I mean, that we just tell you, no, I think it, okay, we have, this pro we have this project and part of, our, part of this project is that we align and uh, that's why we are breaking everything for everybody now. So we're doing a version two. Like if you want to do, if you want to do it the old way, you use version one. But in version two, we will all be using all, all everybody who's who is working this project will be using this common uh, terminology, and it's not compatible with the old one. No, I agree. We have to do use, to use that some kind of mapping. I'm just wondering how to avoid doing n squared mappings for n type systems. Yeah, I'm also wondering that. And I think I think transparency might be one one way of doing it. So um, making clear how different type systems relate to each other. So providing mappings actually that that we build and that uh, that people can use. And um, uh, another thing is like that, that, that I believe is maybe like the, the force of the market. So. Uh, Trying to bring different markets, or different domains closer to each other, and uh, um, which have d d different user bases or different strength of, of users. So try to try to reduce the incentive of creating yet a new thing by showing you know there's already all of this stuff out there, and um, you can you can just uh, you can just use use this, um, and and ad you know advertising. Uh, make uh, telling people like you don't have to to invent something new. 
or or establishing a process by which by which these things can be developed. I mean, Isocat tried that, so they created this this concept repository, this this concept uh, registry, but I. Not sure. I had a feeling that people did not really flock to it a lot. So for some people, put a lot of stuff in there, but um, I had a feeling people didn't really pick it up so much. And in the in the semantic web space, um, I think the semantic web community tries to avoid duplication. Um, you know, by, for example, by reusing features. So if you if you want to describe a person. Uh, you go to the friend of a friend ontology and start picking up the name and the first name and last name and whatever from from friend of a friend, and then there are some other ontologies and you know in that way you construct your 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 resources by by Frankensteining together uh, uh, features from all kinds of different ontologies, um, which is somehow nice because we, we at least what we know now is uh, what are equivalent features across different resources. But uh, we still don't have um, equivalent structures between resources. I feel so. That's that's kind of this 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 question or this this question mark that I have in my head about can can part of the problem be solved be solved um, through through semantic web technology at what level uh, or or does it does it not help anything at all? So I've, I've I've recently started implementing a writer for for DK Pro Core, which which basically, or for Yima, I would say rather, which basically takes the Yima CAS and writes it as an RDF document, uh, which is probably duplicating work that you have done in, in the Sparkle uh, mapper, and um, um, just to get a feeling of how does this does this enhanced granularity help us in some way? But I I can't say that I have a very good uh, that I'm very positive about it so far. So it, it looks nice. Uh, it looks somehow very trivial to to convert it into this format, but I'm not so sure if if it's actually I any mean, if, if it's actually a lot be very beneficial to have it in that format um, to do more things. I'm not feeling very uh, empowered um, by by using that format. I'm, I'm also not very optimistic about the future of um, using RDF for this kind of stuff, to be to be honest. Um, I think the world is going towards things like JSON. Yeah, but that's kind of the same thing. So there's JSON LD, which is just another rendering of RDF. Yeah, but JSON LD is already a specific schema on top of JSON that, yeah, as you mentioned, is pretty much RDF in JSON, right? Yeah. But uh, JSON is just a format, so JSON also doesn't solve anything by itself. JSON, sure. plain JSON, has this has, for example, the same problem that we have, have that we have when we look at gate. So if there is a number somewhere in a JSON uh, property, um, we don't know whether the number is an ID ID ref relation or whether it's just a number. Uh, I, I just uh, um, a completely different question, uh, not related to, well, not entirely not related. But um, what is the end goal of the? Um, sorry, was it called minimalist script or what is it called? The this what you describe as a sandbox, not the platform. Yeah, the the idea is that we can in uh, investigate all the questions that we are currently discussing in a practical way. So we can implement mappings at at component level, between components, we can play around with uh, with things in a in a very restricted environment, um, where we are independent of uh, of how uh, the rest of the project develops. So of the availability, of, of, the of the availability of uh, of a workflow editor, of the availability of uh, processing resources um, on a compute cluster or something. It's uh, we can just focus on these particular questions that we have related to how do we how do we build a pipeline from different components from different sources? Yeah. So um, is that going to be a tool, something that I can play with? Well, actually, you can. It's on GitHub. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, what, what sort of what sort of elements currently, and what sort of elements it will uh, uh, it will have in the future? 
Uh, I think that um, probably the I don't see the architecture changing a lot uh, right now. I, th I just think that particular as um, implementations of the of, of aspects of the architecture can change, like adding a new adapter, adding a support, yeah, basically adding new adapters or data converters for the for the most part. Um, but I don't think that the architecture structure in general will change a lot. So sorry, this this in this diagram, the conversion, is that part of the two or not? It's um yeah, it's it's part we of have the, convert cast to gates. We have is that we have a we have a converter uh, we have a class inside the source code that handles the conversion at the moment. Yeah. And and uh, uh, this conversion uh, is taking what some sort of uh, like some sort of script written in like for example type mapper or or something like that. Or? Um, right now, the conversion is handled by a Groovy script, or by a Groovy class, basically, um, because the type mapper is a very recent addition. It's it should be open source now, maybe. Um, uh, I don't know what the I couldn't point it to a URL, but probably Jacob could, or if he can't do it now, he probably could do it in a couple of days. So. Um, so right now the open minted script uh, does not uh, have any built in primitives for type mapping. So the type mapper is called as a, as a component, just as any other component. Um, but with the availability of the type mapper as an open source component, we could start embedding that more deeply, like having a primitive for mapping, like we have a primitive for apply or for read or for write. Okay, so uh, what I'm getting at is that um, perhaps it will be nice to have uh, to have an ability to uh, write this conversion in whatever we please. So if I want to use the syntax of type mapper, I'm going to use the type mapper converter. If I want to use it, if I want to do it in Java, I'll just use Java, Python, uh, Groovy, whatever. Um, so that way you can you can you can always present uh, those structures those, those outcoming structures from one component and incoming structures to the other component uh, and the other component in some sort of unified way right whether they are typed uh, whether they have features or not you we can probably represent them somehow right so we could each of those different types of converters, whether it's pure Java, pure Python, type mapper, uh, Spark or whatever, as input would get that structure and would be expected to produce an output that complies with the with the next component. Yeah, that is that that would work if we use the same meta model. So if we convert from CAS to CAS, for example. Right, or from gate to gate, or if we could assert that the meta models are equivalent, or if we introduce yet another um, meta why, why model, a uniform meta model, like we, we convert everything from CAS to RDF and everything from gate to RDF, and on the way back we convert everything from RDF to CAS and from RDF to gate. But what, why, why wouldn't it work with between, for example, CAS and gate using Java? Because then then you, you would have to do two mappings at the same time. One is the meta model mapping, and the other is the uh, is the schema mapping. Or are you suggesting that we create the wrapper around the CAS and around the gate data structures, which makes them look uniform? Exactly, something that uh, each uh, I'm not sure if this is what you call model uh, would have, so it would know how to represent. The, type, the things it can represent to this common structure, all right? And this is this will be the input to your converter. And you as a programmer, as a developer, would be expected to uh, create an equivalent structure for the next component. And that next component would know how to translate whatever you created to, to the model of that component. But we wouldn't make this a... Uh this new interface, it would just be an interface really. So we would really just wrap the lower level objects. We would not create yet another object representation. Yeah, that's yeah. an interesting solution. Yeah. I should, 
you know, that that's something we should really try. And I think that the open minted script being a sandbox environment gives us the right frame frame to to exactly go and, and try such a thing. It sounds very interesting. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 I, and I think that having this uh, would uh, uh, probably direct the future work. So uh, probably you would get more interest in writing in any of those languages that I mentioned, Python, Java, or um, Type Mapper. And once you once people start using start making those conversions, what you're getting is you could you could also put it in a repository, mm. and that repository would ultimately be your type system conversions converters, right? And as you mentioned, the market would probably dictate which converters would be popular and which wouldn't be, right? So some would die out, some would just be in use. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we should first make the first step. So I think we should really, I think the, the, the exactly. idea of, of creating this interface and wrapping it around the cast and the annotation set and uh, building on top, building conversion on top of that, that sounds, that sounds uh, very interesting. Yeah, that's 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 why that's why why I pointed out at the very beginning that I would like to see the the ability to um, get the different components from different platforms into one single space, and then I could play with it myself and yeah. and, and see where it goes. And having this 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 uh, conversion interface would be of great help because then I could use the language of my choosing to yeah. do the conditions itself. Yeah. So I'm not sure about Python unless you want to use Jython, but since this is all currently Java based, it would probably be at the moment at least limited to Java, Java based uh, languages, Groovy, Scala, uh, Java, Clojure or something like that. Um, but, or Jython. Uh, but otherwise, so the code for this open minted script is out there. It's on github.com slash open minted. Um, we have several projects there from the, from the open minted project. Um, uh, but uh, a slight warning is that uh, it requires a snapshot version of a branch of gate in which the, um, in which the, um, the gate uh, Maven uh, stuff is currently being developed. Although we also have an automatic build of that branch, and we actually deployed the gate uh, gate Maven artifacts to our open minted Maven repository. So I think if you check it out and run it, it should actually work, and it should get the right artifacts from our snapshot repository. If you if you wanted to look into it, never give give some more feedback maybe. Yeah, uh, it will be it will be nice to see some sort of demonstration of all this. Uh, I'm not saying now, uh, but yeah. maybe you know, as 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 kind of a, a yeah demonstration of the whole system. I don't know. Maybe there is actually already one in GitHub. A demo, not, but uh, we have test cases. So if you check out and just run the Maven test cases, you will see that it's doing something and. Uh, each test case consists of a mini of a very small script, but there's um, so you could consider that as a demo maybe, although it's not very instructive. It's just uh, showing you, uh, um, but it's a nice starting point. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. Are there any further questions or points? Jock, you you pulled something into the chat. There's the language application grid web service exchange vocabulary proposed by Ayat et al. Yes, yes, there is. And um, um, I, I'm not entirely sure what to make of this because the web service, because this is linked to, to LIF, which is their, uh, the labs interchange format. And um, I think that they kind of uh, define in the exchange vocabulary the terminology that is used in LIF and inside the exchange vocabulary then they link to other um, to other type definitions so such as uh, uh, definitions from ISOCAT for example and uh, and in that way they try to establish um, an, explanar an explanatory equivalence between the the concept that they, that they use in the labs interchange format or in the labs grid 
with um, the concepts that people in other places use. And in DK Pro Core, we have started to do the same thing. So we have started adding um, adding links to our types and actually at the, even at the feature level that point out that the DK Pro Core sentence is equivalent to the gate sentence, is equivalent to the uh, lapse sentence and the uh, um, the feature for the named entity value is equivalent to, to something else at, uh, in laps and, and so on. And uh, that is informative, but it's not, um, it's not, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's at a level where it can be used automatically to, to, to actually perform mappings. And uh, Hidia asks if I had, or if we had a look at the NIF ontology from the Freem project. Um, so NIF is uh, is all a bit older than Freem. So I think Freem is currently using NIF 2.1 or something like that in develop uh, or developing, continue developing on it. So yes, I had a look at it, and I've also added links to NIF from DK Pro Core. I've actually implemented a NIF reader and writer in order to get a bit more familiar with with NIF. And um, so, so from my perspective, NIF is uh, quite similar to all the different type systems that, that we have discussed, to the Argo, ClearTK, DK Pro, core type system. So the basic things are, are there, sentences, tokens, and named entities, and so on. Um, but um, looking at the type systems from the Lima space and at NIF, for example, I see that uh, uh, the, the type systems that, that are already used in Argo and DK Pro Core and you compare, uh, they typically cover more than what NIF is currently covering. So, um, yeah, so NIF is, um, we can map in and out of NIF. That shouldn't be much of a problem, but from looking at, at NIF, I didn't see really what, what it adds on top of what we already have. And it's it actually if we just stick to the NIF ontology, it actually takes things away because it doesn't cover everything that that we already cover in the other type systems. Does does that answer your question? Or do you have any other different opinion, maybe? All right, all right, yeah. If it could help, at I was wondering if it could help at the. Uh, Hidir says I was wondering if it could help at the schema integration mapping at the et cetera level. Yeah, I, I don't think it can. I mean, we can, we can. Um, it's one more format or one more type system that we can link to, um, but it's. Uh, I don't have strong numbers to support this, but I would expect that there are probably more people out there in the world using CTEX or DK Procore or or Argo or Gate than, than people that are using NIF. And it's, as I said, it's not covering everything that we have. So um, I think it's it's prominently developed and placed, but I don't feel, I have, don't have the feeling that people are flocking to it either. So there's simply, there are so many things that the market is so fragmented that, that the people simply don't flock to things unless they're very, there's a very strong, uh, um, a reason why why should they choose a particular type system and uh, one reason can be and there's good tooling support for it there's a, or there are many so there are many components supporting it and uh, and I think that inside this project here and inside open minted we have people that that have that that, that, that work or develop type systems and, and tools uh, that are used uh, quite a lot in different communities so um, if we bring those closer together, I think we we reach more than if we try to to um, to uh, adopt uh, uh, an emerging format that is outside the consortium and that is not yet used and that is not covering everything that we already do cover. My opinion. I I don't know if anybody else has a has a different view on that. Yeah, so Hidir uh, uh, says, I see Jock, it's a, a good argument. Okay, so if there are no further questions, then I would suggest we wrap up the session. We've spent quite a bit of time also in the discussion. We're now running into one hour and 45 minutes. So I think this was a very 
interesting discussion with lots of uh, good feedback and interesting questions. And I would like to thank you all very much for participating uh, and uh, giving your feedback. And um, again, I would like to point out that there is the next uh, um, the next webinar on legal aspects uh, uh, next week. Um, you can find the uh, specific days dates on uh, on the Foster platform. Um, I fortunately didn't put them on the on the slide, and uh, sorry for that. Uh, but if you want to join, please write me an email, and I'll forward the the details to you. Um, yeah, thank you all very much and uh, hope to see you around again.